Hey, how's it going? I'm Ida Colton and welcome to my vlog. All right, okay, so at the end of the last one, I said I was considering sort of doing a few sort of, hey, here's my life kind of stories. Um, I think I'm going to stick with that plan for both this week and for next week, um, but to kind of sort of make it a bit more um, concise, concise. Um, I'm going to sort of try to stick to a particular theme and topic for each of them. So this week's theme is going to be holidays and my childhood holidays and what I can sort of remember and, and particular moments that sort of have stuck out to me um, over the years. Um, and so growing up, um, most of my holidays were, were family holidays. We always went away with, uh, well, pretty much always went away with my grandparents. And occasionally we would go away with other members of my dad's family as well. Um, certainly before my cousins came along. Um, I don't I don't think we actually did any after my cousins sort of started coming along. Because um, obviously then you've got a lot more people to deal with. You've got, you know, there, there was a bit of a gap between sort of the three of us, um, to me and my two brothers, and the, the oldest of um, our cousins on that side. So obviously, you know, trying to keep like these very different age ranges um, entertained more than always necessarily the easiest thing to do so it made more sense that we didn't sort of then go away with um, with uh, other members of my dad's family after that sort of point but sort of before that point it happened at least a few times that I can think of um, but mostly it would have been just you know uh, my parents my brothers and I and my grandparents that would, would go away together um, like I said not always we did have a few holidays where it was just you know my parents and my brothers and me, <laughs> obviously. Um, but you know, most of the holidays that, are, that stick out in my mind, most of the holidays that I remember, you know, it, it was a sort of a slightly bigger affair. Um, so yeah, that that was always sort of like like, like quite a good thing, and, and you know, various holidays sort of stick in my mind better for that reason because you know there might have been a, somebody else there that wouldn't have normally been there, even though we might have gone to somewhere that we we'd previously been. Um, so I'm going to start this with, I think, probably the earliest memory um, of the, the group of memories I kind of want to talk about um, specifically. And this would have been the end of one of my holidays. Um, I think I was about seven, uh, seven or eight at the time. I um, can't remember exactly because, you know, just a little kid, it all kind of blurs together. <laughs> so one of the things... Um, we used to do is at the end of the holidays we um, would give out gifts to everybody who'd been on, on holiday with us. Um, so you know me and my brothers were expected to, to use some of our money. Um, not, not a huge amount but just to get like nice little gifts um, for everybody else and sort of like nice little souvenirs um, and, and for each other as well and, and stuff like that. Um, and at the end of this particular holiday um, the gift that I got from my, my grandparents was a little, uh, I want to say porcelain clown doll. Um, technically, technically speaking, he's not all porcelain. Um, his, his hands, his face and his feet are, um, but his body is, it's maneuverable. I'm not entirely sure what it's made out of, but it's definitely not made out of porcelain. <laughs> um... Anyway, he, he was the gift that I got um, from my grandparents. And as a, as a little child, um, and certainly as a little child who was definitely at that point telling um, ghost stories about creepy dolls, <laughs> being given a creepy doll was not exactly uh, something I necessarily particularly wanted. Um, so I'm not sort of afraid to say that, yeah, initially was very creeped out by this gift but of course like like you do like you're expected to you know I smile so it's very nice and, and thank my grandparents because you know obviously they put some thought <laughs> to buying this for me um so and I know this sort of like goes goes beyond the holiday a little bit but um I I got home with this with this creepy 
what was to that to me then a creepy clown doll and I was a bit you know perturbed and a little bit well, what do I do with this thing is this thing gonna kill me in the middle of the night <laughs> you know do I have to be careful of this thing and you know how how do I make sure that you know this this thing isn't gonna get me um to which my rather cute little solution was to make friends with it um to, well I should say him um, and to, to, to name him and to task him with protecting my bedroom. I still have the clown doll. <laughs> um, there are early videos on this channel of me doing vlogs um, where I'm sat in front of the bookcase in, in my previous um, in my previous flat, the, one, the last flat that I ever rented because obviously I own this one. Um, and there are times where you can see the, the clown doll that I'm talking about sat on the shelf behind me. Um, I still have him. He is still, you know, he's still here now. He is, you know, not too far away from where I'm sitting because the, the bookcase he's on is in, in the living room. And that's where I am. Um, so this, you know, this, this gift that was, was given to me as, as a child that I was initially kind of freaked out by in maybe not as appreciative of as I should have been, is one of the few things that I've still held on to. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I could say the same about most of the other things that I was given um, as holiday gifts. Most of them have either been lost or broken or I've grown out of or whatever, but I still have Craig. He's called Craig, by the way, <laughs> which is the most appropriate name for a clown ever. And I don't want to hear anybody say anything <laughs> to the contrary. <laughs> Please do not insult Craig. Um, but yeah, no, just, just that simple act of, of naming Craig and befriending Craig. Um, it's kind of one of the reasons why I don't necessarily remember the holiday that well, but as, as a holiday gift, um, I still have him, I still respect him, I still cherish him. In fact, um, so obviously uh, with all the decorating and stuff, I've not been able to unpack my stuff. I wasn't able to unpack my stuff for, for a length of time. Um, and when I was finally able to start unpacking my stuff again, and I took Craig out of, of the, the storage container that he was in, I, I hugged him and I welcomed him to the flat <laughs> like I would an old friend because I, I've, missed, I've missed him, I've missed seeing him, um, so, you know, it, it's one of those, those weird kind of quirky things which sort of started off, you know, you'd never think, I'd have never thought that, you know, seven, seven, eight-year-old me receiving, quite frankly, a scary gift <laughs> would, you know, however many years later be like, you know what, this is one of my favourite possessions, this is, something that is deeply meaningful to me and you know I hope he never gets damaged or broken because I don't I don't know what I would do I think I would be very very upset though the fact that he has survived so many moves intact you know it, it says a lot and you know it's it's yeah <laughs> yeah um okay so moving on from that one um I don't really quite know the order of which the next one's sort of for. Um, but I know the, the next one I sort of, I want to sort of talk about because it sort of came to me like after I'd sort of started doing, sort of started filming this vlog rather than one of the ones that I'd initially sort of planned out. Um, so we didn't do many family, uh, we didn't do many holidays abroad. <laughs> we didn't do, uh, we only did one when I was growing up. I've had holidays abroad since, you know, since my late teens um, and in my adulthood, but growing up, uh, we only did the one family holiday abroad. Um, we went to France and we stayed in a farmhouse and um, the farmhouse had this uh, tree house at the back, which was probably not that difficult to get to because I wasn't that bad a climber, but there were lots of spider webs and spiders around it, so I was not going up into that treehouse. <laughs> um, it also had a games room up in the attic, um, where I think my brothers and I spent a fair amount of time. If I remember, I think there was like one of those uh, small air hockey, simple air hockey tables, and I think we spent a, time, a lot of time playing that, and I think there's a 
room which had like a huge um I want to say snooker table um, or billiards table um, rather than a pool table because it was, you know, the proper full big size one. And I think pool tables are a lot smaller. Um, could be wrong. I really don't know. <laughs> I know I'm no expert on this. Um, I also remember from this particular holiday um, that after this holiday, we, uh, my family got a proper crepe pan for cooking pancakes um because we went to this restaurant where there were delicious savory and sweet pancakes and we had uh, a pancake meal um and it's also when me and my brothers got a french tamagotchi we, we didn't own a tamagotchi and we got a tamagotchi between the three of us and it was a french tamagotchi so all the, the, like, the instruction booklet was in french but we pulled our money together and we, we bought it together and I think my mum looked after it more than we did. <laughs> just, just because we weren't allowed to take it to school with us. That wasn't like our choice. Mum wouldn't let us take it to school with us. <laughs> um, but the thing I sort of remember most about this particular holiday is the week that we went away on holiday was also the week that Princess Diana died. Um, and I remember, you know, my brothers and I were usually up fairly early um there was one channel i think we could access which had english speaking tv on it um so we were up early in order to watch you know morning cartoons because you know that's the sort of age range we were in at the time um and instead of, of that there was just this constant news coverage of you know what had happened um and um and one of the my 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 aunts who who were, was on holiday with us um, was was really quite upset by it um, was was really quite affected by it um, and I you know it's one of those things where I can sort of pinpoint exactly where I was when you know when I heard that news um, because you know it it was like close to not, not close to where we were in France uh, but we you know we were sort of a lot closer to it than. We would have been if we'd holidayed at home in England. In fact, I think if we'd holidayed at home in England, the whole thing, well, you know, I would, wouldn't be able to tell you anything. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I wouldn't have any memories that were sort of surrounding it. Um, but I've always sort of had that kind of weird association between that holiday in France and, and that particular event happening. Um, I was still at that sort of stage where I was sort of, old enough to kind of know what was going on and understand what was going on but you know, I wasn't really interested in the world at large and I know that sounds kind of strangely selfish of me considering I do try to be quite an empathic person now but even now I don't like watching news I don't like news coverage um, I do kind of try to keep myself quite isolated from you know a lot of the a lot of the stuff that's going on in, in the world because there is so much there's so much bias and there's so much this and there's so much that um but I think back then it was more a case of you know I, I, I was a kid I wanted to watch cartoons <laughs> you know um I wasn't necessarily you know be, being selfish and not understanding you know the, the tragedy I was just being a kid I just you know, wanted to, to have fun and enjoy my morning and and my holiday um but it, it's one of those things where, yeah, it's it's kind of stuck with me. And the older that I've gotten, the more it's kind of resonated as one of those kind of things where the event has taken on more importance to, as I've matured and become older. And, you know, I, I understand a lot more, you know, the, the impact that this, this kind of had on you know, the country that I'm living in and, you know, various other things like that. And some of the reasons why I do when there are certain documentaries on, take the time to sort of watch those and, and try to understand these things that, you know, back at the times when they sort of happened, I maybe didn't have the same emotional response as a lot of the people that I knew. Um, and it, as I said, it isn't, wasn't necessarily a case of me not caring, it was more a case of, you know, it just wasn't something that impacted on me at the time. But as I've sort of grown up, it has impacted me a bit, a bit more. And it's one of those weird kind of things that's kind of like, oh, why do I associate that with the whole day? Well, because it was, for me, those two things are sort of connected, you know. I remember where I was because I happened to be on holiday in France. I remember 
some of the reactions that were going on around me a lot clearer because it was something that was sort of juxtaposed with the situation I was in and you know where I was and, and everything else that was going on and you know the, the more time you sort of uh, the longer you sort of had to live with those sort of memories the, the more they sort of you know form that kind of association with you um if you like <laughs> and I'm actually now now that I think about it I'm fairly certain that I am doing this in chronological um order um because I'm fairly certain this this third recollection is definitely the the most recent um of all of them it kind of would have to have been uh, because this was, you know, after my parents started doing the line dancing, whereas the other ones, I think, before they they were really doing the line dancing, I think they might just start it um, at that sort of time. Um, but this was sort of like after they started doing like competitions, and they were going away for weekends away so that they could do certain line dancing events. And this particular holiday <laughs> was more of a weekend away. <laughs> um, and it, it uh, I guess. It, See, I, I, I could go two ways with this. Um, I could also sort of mention the fact that I, for a while, associated caravan holidays with being sick because consistently, for a little while, if we went away on a caravan holiday, I ended up being unwell during that week. Um, one particular one, right at the start of the holiday, we'd all gone down to this beach um, just to sort of check it out, and we took the stupidest route back, which uh, involved us trying to climb this the hill of sand and everybody really really struggling and I was struggling a lot more and because um obviously it was to start my me being sick um and you know uh they they weren't really sort of aware that I was sick at that point so they just thought I was complaining for the sake of complaining um you know they they couldn't help me out because they were struggling themselves and that kind of thing um, and then the following morning you know we, were, we went swimming and then after we were swimming I like literally went and laid down under a bench because I was just not very well. <laughs> um, which has nothing to do with the actual story that I, I wanted to be telling, but yeah, no, for, for a while I associated caravan holidays with being unwell. Um, and I don't remember if in this particular instance we were in the caravan or if we were in the chalet. I have a feeling we were in the chalet. Um, but again, this to do with me being or oh, ending up quite unwell. Um, and me and my brothers had gone down to the park that was um, in that area. It had been raining. Um, I believe our granddad was watching us. Um, and my brothers had both run down this slide because my brothers are idiots. <laughs> uh, but I'm also an idiot and I wanted to, to, to sort of keep up with them and prove that I could do it too. So I ran down the slide and I fell. I whacked my back against the, the the end of the slide, and the slide was about you know that far off the ground, um, like the base of it being like that thick, and then like a um, gap like that. This is how I remember it. This is how I remember it. Whether or not it was like that, I don't know, but I do remember it square in the back. I was definitely winded for a few seconds, um, and then like literally that evening, I was really really unwell. I was throwing up quite a lot. Um, the, the verdict was that I must have knocked a bit, you know, I, I must have already had a bug in my system and the knock just, you know, shocked my system and that's what made me unwell, but that was mostly the conclusion that had been drawn because nobody wanted to take me to A&E. <laughs> it was more, it was more like a cruel thing. Um, my dad sort of, you know, said to me, do you think that you were feeling unwell anyway? And this has just knocked it, you know, knocked it out. This is you not not your system um, a little bit. Or do you think that the fall itself has made you sick? Uh, bear in mind that if we think the fall itself made you sick, we will have to go to a &E and, you know, that's everybody's weekend sort of, you know, done and, and, and gone because you'll probably be there for a while, um, stuff like that. And so I went with the, yeah, okay, probably just knock it, knock it into my system. I probably did just knock it into my system, to be fair. I mean, I did get back problems now, but I've also got high mobility, so I'm going to get back problems regardless. I'm fairly certain I had back problems before that point, <laughs> even if it was just sort of like mildly had back problems before that point. So, you no, know, I, I, you know, I've, I've had my lower back x rayed since, and there's not, you know, any signs of damage there. Um, 
So it was probably the right decision to have made at the time. Um, but even so, um, I, you know, I do feel like that's one of those things that kind of stuck with me. Um, because I just, I just remember just being absolutely winded. And it was, I think, the first time I realised that a knock to your back could wind you. I'd always sort of, like, associate it with, you know, like, blows to your front, blows to your stomach. You know, it wasn't the first time in my life I'd ever been winded. But it was the first time where it was, like, a knock to my back, which had done it. And quite a heavy knock to my back as well. And I just, you know, kind of associate that weekend away with that. Um, although I probably should have also associated that weekend away with, uh, that was the weekend away that my little brother dislocated the top part of his finger. And, um, that also didn't get x-rayed for a long time. <laughs> um, and he, he sort of lived with the top part of his finger being, uh, slightly dislocated for actually a few years. <laughs> <laughs> before something was finally done about it um but yeah no I mean you know the, these are some sort of very isolated you know not necessarily positive um experiences that I've had with holidays but even within those experiences I just said every single one of those holidays were had positivity in them and had positive moments in them and they weren't bad holidays there were lots of things about those things that I do think there was holidays that I do remember that were really positive and that were really good and you know all of my you know memories growing up you know when I look back on it now I would always say that I always had good holidays I always had you know fun holidays and it's kind of weird I don't take holidays now as an adult um because I, I don't think I've ever had a 100% bad holiday I think they've always been things about my holidays that have kind of salvaged it and kind of saved it and you know I wouldn't say that I've ever had a holiday where I'm like oh I'm never going on a holiday again that was awful um so it's kind of weird I don't do them very often as an adult but um as I've discussed before I wouldn't want to go on holiday on my own and it's trying to either go away with with my family which is increasingly rare because you know my brothers don't live locally anymore we're all adults um my parents take their own holidays you know um uh, with their with their current partners um and and stuff like that so um you know it, it'd be a case of motivating my friends and you know my friends aren't necessarily in like financial positions in order to go away on holiday and although they they feel like it i mean i'm not necessarily in the financial position to go away on holiday and i feel like i will be i will be now that i'm a homeowner and i know i'm gonna have to save for my deposit um i will be able to start you know thinking about and planning out these kind of things um because you know before i would say that my deposit you know i did have the, like, the ability to say to to go on holiday or, or put my share towards family holidays um stuff like that so yeah it, it's very 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 likely that i will be at some point in the next couple of years going on holiday again probably with my friends maybe with my family it all depends on how, like, how it sort of works out but i'm not the type of person who would go away on holiday on my own and yeah, a lot of that is to do with, you know, growing up, the good memories I've had about the holidays um, have always been the people that I've been with and the things that I've been doing um, quite often with my brothers because, you know, most of my <laughs> holidays were family holidays, which kind of meant the three of us were stuck together <laughs> when we wouldn't normally be. Um, so it's kind of a, a good thing that even though sort of growing up my brother and I didn't necessarily get on the best, um, we, we could still put aside our different differences and have fun. Um, even though, yeah, I'm pretty sure we fought on every single one of those holidays. <laughs> just, just because, just because, you know, we, that was the kind of ages we were at and, you know, stuff like that. All right, all right. So hope this one has been sort of interesting um i have no idea how any of these are gonna sort of go or turn out for people um right now um because this is sort of an experiment to sort of see how this format kind of pans out um and to you know just fill in a few extra vlogs for the year 
stop when I'm running out of ideas. It's that I've got so much else on my mind at the moment that it, it's not always the easiest thing in the world to think of ideas. Um, so next time is going to be another one of these little story time sessions. Um, but I'm not going to give you the topic theme um, until the start, until I start filming it. Um, I was going to film the next one now because I quite like doing them in, in pairs and in together, um, but I'm not feeling really well. So I'm going to take advantage of the fact that um, my days off are going to work out decently for getting another one done this week and save the recording for, for when I'm feeling a little bit less dizzy. Um, I know my health has not been fantastically great the last few weeks. Um, all the last few recording sessions, um, I saw a bit of a cold. I uh, I don't know. I'm just. I, I think it's been a long year, and my body is just yeah. <laughs> right. So yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I have really looking forward to see what I come up with to talk about next time, and I will see you guys next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya.